Well, happy Thanksgiving Day 2018. Um, this video is kind of a long time in the making. Um, I'm uh, going to show how to make a wing bone turkey call. Uh, and it's an uh, ancient uh, Native American hunting tool uh, to basically use the uh, bird's wing bones to make a resonating sound uh, using a, a smooching or a kissing uh, sound uh, to mimic the uh, clucks of a hen or the uh, gobbles of a, of a big tom turkey. And um, you're just going to go kind of there. I'm not going to do it very loud right now. Uh, I will at a later video. Uh, and this is using the three pieces of the um, of the wing bone, and this is the humerus, the uh, ulna, and the radius. And then here is a earlier version that I made, uh, just using the uh, humerus and the ulna, um, or excuse me, the the, the radius, the uh, humerus and the radius. Um, and I'm using a uh, pine pitch to seal the edges to make a a uh, airtight seal. For the resonator this makes more of a high pitch sound here um, so uh, to begin with they will need some tools to try this um, and let's see uh, you'll need uh, some sandpaper uh, I've got some 60 grit and some 220 grit sandpaper um, uh, a screwdriver would be helpful a Phillips head screwdriver here would be helpful uh, and a pencil and a um, pair of scissors, a lighter if you're using pine pitch, and I have a pitch sticks. Otherwise, for gluing, you can use um, epoxy uh, and super glue uh, mixed with Elmer's glue. You'll need that to create a nice um, thick glue that'll dry solid to seal the uh, the joining parts here, and that will um, that that creates the, an air an airtight seal. Uh, additionally, but not really necessary, uh, it would help, is I've got a piece here made from a hanger and this will help remount the parts of the bone. Uh, and I'm just, I just snipped that away um, using an, an, a hanger and I just snipped that uh, using a pair of needle nose pliers that has the uh, wire cutter on it. And then I went on ahead and, and bent the end like so, so that I've got a nice little handle that I can grab hold to. So this type of tool, some sort of reamer or really uh, small needle nose file would be very useful. So, uh, oh, and then either some bleach and hydrogen uh, peroxide, uh, it, that's optional too, you don't really need that, but it helps make the bones white. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through this tutorial. And uh, again, there's plenty of, um, there are plenty of uh, hunters out there, I'm not a turkey hunter, uh, that make these uh, turkey calls. And some of their and, and many of their tutorials are very good, and so I would uh, I'm gonna put some some links uh, attached to this video so you can check out their videos. Um, and uh, they really got a lot of good information on there, and I use the, their web their channels as a reference for this video. All right, so uh, this is a video was a long time coming for the most part, and uh, I'm gonna make a turkey call. It's uh, Thanksgiving week 2018 and uh, many people are making some greens and such things um, and um, they use smoked turkey to smoke turkey wings, smoke, smoke turkey necks, etc, etc uh, for their collars and their, their turn up and their, you know and, 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 and what not greens um, and so I'm going to, I've made some and I'm going to make a turkey call uh, out of the turkey bones and this is the turkey wing so I got some some turkey uh, smoked turkey to flavor and add protein to um, some greens here uh, for Thanksgiving here and so I boiled them till the pretty much the meat falls off of the bone uh, and here's a nice delectable smoke smoke skin uh, this is so good um, and but right now what I'm interested in is the bones right and so this is the uh, the, the wing this is going to be I think the humerus which would be your upper arm of the wing and you see it's pretty good bit pretty big and then you've got the uh, 
the, the uh, ulna and the radius of the uh, forearm of the wing which is this part so the humerus is this part up here up here and the all the ulna and the radius and the radius is the smaller bone I believe correct me if I'm wrong uh, is the smaller bone that's on the the wrist side which is this knuckle here in your wrist that rotates around the uh, the, 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 the ulna, the main bone here. So this is the main bone and this is the radius. If I, again, if I'm wrong, you guys are anthropology uh, uh, gurus, please correct me if I got that wrong. I didn't do any uh, research before doing this video. Anyways, so we've got the humerus, the ulna, and the radia. We're going to use this to make um, a turkey call out of uh, a turkey wing. Okay, so um, I wanted to show, because like I said, I like to keep things on the primitive uh, level and um, even though I'm indoors in a nice conditioned, air conditioned apartment, la la la. Um, and I've been doing some videos that are more on the uh, modern and practical uh, side of uh, survival and primitive tech, or survival. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to bring it back a little bit and so part of making this um, turkey call out of bone is you know how would you do this if you didn't have a knife or a saw and so i'm using a, a big flake of, a, of obsidian here and yes it's very very sharp um i've already kind of cut myself a little bit uh with it it already kissed me and um it's just like i said this stuff is not to be trusted it's extremely sharp you got to be careful um and so i've been grinding away at it and hopefully you can kind of see oops i went off camera my bad you can kind of see this, the the where I'm getting at, you know, and it's taken me about you know, about three to five minutes to get this far. Um, you know, again, a saw I would saw right through this would probably take me no more about thirty seconds if that. Um, but you know, this is what we have. This is what we had to work with, way way back in the day. Um, and if uh, push came to shove, and this is all you had was a piece of glass or a piece or a piece of um, sharp stone, this is what you would do to make uh, your the tool that you need and again I'm holding this with a towel here um, because this is very sharp and slick and I definitely don't want to be um, cutting myself um, with this piece, piece of stone and I have a video on making a, a, a hoko which is um, I believe it's an Inuit term and basically all I'm doing is hafting a handle onto uh, a, 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 the flake of a stone tool and that gives you leverage it also protects your hands right um, and so I may I may do that later on and is processing this um, these bones to make this uh, turkey call but um, for now what I'm doing is I'm I'm basically hafting a, a, a piece of cloth to protect my hands this could have been a piece of buckskin or a piece of rawhide or whatever but um, essentially all I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm just kinda I'm just grinding it and this is a bad camera angle but I can kinda grind this and uh, you know it's it's working pretty good. It's it's making relatively quick work of this. You know, and it's not a saw tooth. It's not serrated um, edges. It's just really smooth edges. But I can kind of saw through this pretty well. I mean, I'm gonna go back and forth. You know, as I go through this here. And I just what I do is I rotate the bone, and then I can continue to kind of just uh, a braid or saw into it and then it starts to catch a bite or it starts to bite into it and then I start to create my groove like so okay so again this is this part of it is just I wanted to show um, how to use a stone tool to do this with um, you know again you know <laughs> primitive is, is just means first not worse obviously we have steel um, saw blades and serrated knives and I could use another pocket knife and 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 make real quick real quick work out of this um, with the serrated part of this blade um, but you know what fun is that <laughs> so but anyways this just saves the, the, these modern tools just save time is all all right so I was able to abrade through it enough uh, you know with my stone tool here a piece of uh, obsidian flake here and um and I just was able to pop it and uh, here we have and so inside of here is your marrow and your marrow is actually 
a, lot, a good source of protein. A lot of people don't um, eat it outright nowadays, but um, it is definitely a um, source of protein. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to hollow this out. Um, but before then, we're going to have to cut this other part here. And I'm going to save myself some time and energy and go ahead and whip out a, a saw and um, do that part of it and for the rest of these pieces. But again, I, I wanted to just make sure and keep true to the nature of, of my videos um, of, you know, primitive is not first, it's not worse, it means first. Um, and uh, I, like, I like the primitive aspect of something just because I don't have a particular tool for the job uh, per se. Um, doesn't mean I can't improvise or use something else. Okay, uh, and as you saw, we were able to use a stone tool to cut the uh, humerus or the bigger bone, which is going to be the bell of this call. And what I mean by bell is if those that play instrument, like the trumpet or the saxophone bell, the the uh, the, the part that really makes the resonating big sound. Um, so we used a um, stone tool that took a little bit to kind of saw in. So we're going to switch to modern tools and we're talking like compared to stone tools, high tech. You know, I got my Dremel tool just to make things go faster um, <clears throat> for this video. So I'm just going to turn this Dremel tool on. We're going to cut this. got through it so we should be able to kind of pop this apart and there we have uh, the um, the bell part the larger part Let's see we could have gone up further a little bit more because this for the most part is hollow and compartmentalized like that it doesn't have a lot of marrow in there um, so um, but what we can do is we can take this because it's been soaking in water overnight and we can kind of clear this out and I'm just using a a uh, screwdriver to kind of pop some of that, break some of that marrow mesh. Got to be careful not to crack this bone because the bird bones are very fragile actually. They're not, a, they're not particularly strong. So I'm kind of Now we'll boil this a little bit more to um, to soften up the insides, but this is cutting off the uh, the lower part here, uh, which is the humerus, and then uh, we'll take some sandpaper and sand down the end, and then we're gonna go ahead and um, use uh, go to the uh, ulna, which is the bigger part. And the radius which is here the smaller part here so we're gonna take the ulna and here and cut the ends off and then we're gonna have to uh, get this on camera sorry about that so we've got the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, there so we'll get the, uh, the, this is the radius, the bigger one, and the ulna here. This was the humerus that we just cut using the Dremel tool. And again, I'm just going to use my Dremel tool and do the same thing and just cut them off. Again, you can use this hacksaw, uh, a small hacksaw rather, um, stone tool uh, by a braiding. It just takes longer. Uh, for the sake of this demo and project, I'm, I'm cheating. But... Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and take the, uh, the ulna here and, and cut this to length. And there's lots of marrow in here that needs to be um, uh, like bored out. And we'll, we can use a pipe cleaner and, and a, a screwdriver and such like that to kind of push through. So a lot of moisture here, electrical device, got to be safe. All right, so I'm just going to do the other side. And 
then there's that. And essentially how this is gonna work is this piece is going to fit into this piece like so. Uh, and then um, actually technically this piece, this end will fit into this end like so. But I cut it a little longer so that we can make sure that we we can gradually make sure that it fits in there. And then the uh, radius bone here is we're gonna cut this and that's gonna fit in on this side as well. So we're making a three piece um, turkey call. And uh, I'm gonna cut this. So at the end of the day, what we're looking at is something that'll look like this. Like that. So, so Daisy, it's not even in frame. I'm gonna zoom out. So at the end of the day, we're gonna be looking at something that looks like this when we're all done. Um, but um, we've got to bore out this marrow and bore out the marrow on this one here to make it hollow. And then we're gonna have to do some filing and shaping to make sure that this end fits nicely into this end. But as you can almost see, that these are almost square to one another. So this definitely not fit in, right? But we want it to fit in. So we're gonna have to probably drill up a little bit further, but a little bit at a time just to make sure that it, it sits in there. Okay, so for the on the piece here, I'm able to take my little Phillips screwdriver and kind of clear out this uh, the marrow here and uh, kind of clean this out. Makes it nice and hollow, like so. Okay, for this, this is not going to fit in here, and I'll break this bone, which is the radius. Um, and, and traditionally, my understanding is that you could um, basically place your bones on top of an ant hill or around the ants, and the ants will totally do all the work for you. You know, you come back in a couple of days, and all that's left is the bone. They've cleared out the marrow and everything else, but you also run the risk of another animal taking your stuff away. Uh, another way would have been with a... Um, a, a, a wet um, or green stick that is really hot that's, that's thinner than this that you could poke through this and kind of burn it out uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use uh, a uh, hanger I'm just going to take a wire hanger and snip it and use that to kind of poke through which will be thinner than this and stiff um, I will um, and then uh, uh, boil this down so to make sure that the marrow was really um, soft, but um, that's you know I can kind of use that uh, hanger to poke through uh, and or some pipe cleaners. So that will be the next phase. The next phase of this is just cleaning out the marrow. Okay, so this is um, what we have so far. Um, and this is how it fits together for the most part and we got to clog the holes but before I go any further with that um, a part that I cut out um, and kind of did off camera is I took a, a, a hanger uh, and I used a, a needle nose plier with a wire cutter on it and I cut out a section and then um, bent the end so that it's, um, it's safer for me to use as a as a poker and then I was able to take the uh, smaller end or the radius and uh, kind of force out all of the marrow right like so and then sometimes it, it'll stick on one end or the other and you can just take this and and even a little bit kind of came out just now so you can kind of spit out the uh, the the marrow that's there to completely hollow it out now what you do end up having an effect is a straw. So, you know, just if you want to think, when we're, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at and we're talk, talking about um, using bone 
uh, as a medium and specifically bird bones. Bird bones are hollow, so therefore this gives us a pretty durable hollow tube to do all kinds of things, right? If you just want to look at it from that context. So the overall project is to make uh, a, a bird call, a uh, turkey call specifically for hunting. And so um, again, using modern tools, you know, I just kind of made something that I can furl this out. Um, again, primitively, you could let nature take its course, which would take, you know, some time and definitely not in the winter time um, <clears throat> when when the uh, carrion eating bugs are uh, dormant. Uh, you want those types of in animals helpers to be active. So during the spring and summertime and you can lay these bones out and um, or even bury them and those animals will those those insects will come and they'll eat everything but what you need that just takes a lot of time and you hopefully no um, other animals come and try to eat the uh, marrow from the bone which would then break it um, another way again like I said is just to um, boil it until it's really really soft and then you can take uh, a thinner type of twig or something kind of heat it up uh, and and use that as a poker to push the marrow out and again you can you can blow it out and uh, uh, make it more hollow okay primitively speaking whenever you're doing something it's always going to take longer than when you have modern tools okay so that's why we have evolved as such so one thing about studying primitive technology is you get appreciation for our um, modern tools the other flip side to that is you're not reliant on them right so you know you can always go back to basics it's just going to take you longer to get the finished product so at any rate, we're, 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 we're taking these pieces and this piece barely fits in just enough and they kind of have to align in a particular way. And both, all of these pieces, I've actually taken my little tool here and kind of poked out the marrow. And I'm just kind of going to wedge this in here before we do any final sanding. And then I'm going to find the end that is the thicker end for this. I think that's it. And stick, nope, that's what I was wrong. Uh, I want to stick that in there until it can't until it fits snugly and you can kind of rotate it in there and it'll wedge itself in place and so now we have a three kind of three piece call and I can kind of almost kind of with a uh, smooching sound a kind of sound you can go you know once we actually uh, finish this piece and, and, and close up and make this whole uh, instrument airtight uh, it'll be a, a more resonating sound so uh, we're at this stage. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to soak this overnight in water uh, using peroxide. My understanding is you can use bleach as well. And what's going to happen is you're going to, doing that, <clears throat> when, we, when we take it out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit overnight in peroxide and water. Uh, just a cap full of peroxide will be just fine. And um, or a cap full of bleach. And then, um, you know, got to go to work tomorrow. So what's going to happen is, and I can take this out in the morning before I leave, and this can sit out on some paper towel uh, for the whole day and let it dry. And it should be pretty much bone white. And then now we can start to sand it and refine it and kind of try to finish this up as a as a quick um, and dirty. That's my, I guess that's my phrase, quick and dirty uh, turkey, uh, turkey wing bone call. So... So here we go. <clears throat> We've got our bone pieces uh, in um, some water here. And uh, I just got a cap full of bleach here. I'm going to set that in there and let that sit overnight. And then in the morning, before I go to work, I'll just um, lay, this, lay these out on some napkins. I'll go ahead and get the napkin ready. So I just lay this out on napkins when they after they sit overnight. Well, it's the next day, and I want to try and finish this project up. Um, and I let these uh, soak uh, 24 hours or so in um, water and bleach, and then I added a little peroxide. I've used in, I've used in the past just straight peroxide, and it works just fine. Um, so uh, if you want to try to get their um, your uh, turkey bones to be uh, uh, eggshell white. So 
that's what I did. So what we what we're gonna do here is try and fit these pieces together and to start to shape this a bit. And where we left off is um, this barely fits in to the uh, larger part uh, or the what would be called the humerus, the ulna part here. Um, and so I've got which is what we want but it should fit a little bit more snugly but I don't want to force it because the bone is um, very fragile and it'll crack and then we'll have to start all over again with another wing. Um, so what I've got here is I've got some some sandpaper. This here is a 60 grit and then I've got a more finer piece of sandpaper which is a, a 220 grit. So we're going to start off with the, the uh, coarser piece of sandpaper here and I just kind of want to uh, kind of just kind of abrade away some of the edges just enough so I can squeeze this in there. Okay, that looked like that did it. Uh, and again, sandpaper is easy to procure <laughs> at any store. Um, you know, sand, uh, gravel, uh, sandstone, um, you know, concrete, uh, coarse rock would serve the same purpose. So in a, in a primitive situation. So sandpaper is just convenient. So this is fitting snugly in here. And what I want to do is I want to try to abrade around uh, the the um, top of the bell part here so this is fitting in here pretty well and so I'm gonna set this aside and then what I want to do is I want to sand this down same now earlier um, when I first started this is the humerus of the, the thick belt the, the big bell part um, I said that this was filled with marrow actually this part of the wing uh, is actually hollow and it just had like a honeycomb uh, of, of probably you know of, of thin bone or cartilage it's actually quite hollow the uh, humerus or excuse me the ulna part and the radius pipe part actually the ones that actually had the marrow in it so I just wanted to make a correction there so um, I'm gonna take my screwdriver here a chopstick would work and roll this up on here and do the same with the smaller piece here Let's see if I can sand this out to get make sure that the airway is very clean Well, I don't have anything small enough. I don't have any pipe cleaners. 
but this will be fine. Okay, and I'm just going to hone up the edges a bit. take the finer grit sandpaper, split this in half, it's a little bit more manageable, and I can kind of sand down the edges, especially the part that's going to that's gonna go in my mouth, um, just so it's not as sharp edges. Okay, so we've got these pieces um, sand it down and I'm gonna add that uh, bone work is another uh, primitive skill uh, that uh, I find interesting as well because using the whole part of the animal you can make all kinds of things you can make tools weapons jewelry uh, from from the bones of the animals so um, th th there'll be there'll hopefully be more projects with the bone that I can uh, share with uh, via video uh, different projects that I've worked on in the past. So anyways, we're going to time to fit this together and it'll be time to glue it together. So I'll make sure the pieces are fitting properly together. I hope that's correct. So it's the thicker end to the smaller end of the bell piece. Make sure this fits snugly in there. If not, then we're going to have to do some more sanding. Yeah, there it is. And then this up. There we go. So we'll have something that looks like looks like this. Alright, so we'll have something that looks like this. And we're all said and done. So now it's the, the gluing part. Okay, I've got the pieces um, all, I've whitened them with peroxide and bleach. Um, I've got the pieces sanded down and snugly fit into uh, themselves like so. Uh, and I've got, I'm going to, the next step is to glue and create an airtight seal in the areas where they connect here and here. And uh, that's really the goal. And so what I'm gonna use is use some uh, nature super glue, which is pine pitch for the primitive aspect of this. I would, um, most people, many people use super glue and Elmer's glue mixed together. Uh, the Elmer's glue helps fill in uh, some of the holes because uh, the goal is to make a super tight, uh, airtight seal uh, or epoxy would work as well. And then they will take some string uh, and service around the connection points here and here uh, using uh, common whipping. Uh, to just whip around those areas to for a decor decorative touch as well as a um, extra seal. So I'm going to use this um, pine pitch and I've got videos on how to process that as well. Um, I'm going to take a pencil though and I'm going to mark the areas basically how this fits in. And then this one here. So it'll be easier to put this back together and it'll also make it easier to apply the uh, a pine pitch. So now I can take this apart, take these pieces apart, and um, I can go ahead and independently apply the pine pitch. So what I can do a little bit easier is I can just heat this up. It operates like um, a hot glue gun. And then I can, can smear the uh, pitch that I need onto the surface. And you have to operate quickly because this stuff likes to dry very quickly.
Okay, so I've added some a ring of pine pitch around here. And then what I can do is then um, I can kind of lightly heat this up so it becomes malleable again. And then quickly insert this into our piece here. Squeeze in here. And then I can do then lightly, not to scorch the bone, but I can apply. So here we have uh, the structure of the, 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 the turkey call. And uh, is I've, I've used pine pitch to seal this. Uh, let's see here, what, what else? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna uh, pull up some buckskin cordage or whatever I can find and I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to do some whipping around these to make sure that it's tight and airtight. But at this stage, what you do is you kind of make a kissing sound into it. I've got people still asleep now. It's a little early uh, today, uh, Thanksgiving 2018. And uh, I haven't begun cooking yet. I wanted to get this done and out of the way first. Um, but um, when people wake up, I'll, I'll show you how this sounds. I'm not the best turkey caller. I don't really do turkey hunting. I just thought this might be a good little project to do on uh, Thanksgiving. So we have um, our um, call here put together and I uh, used uh, pine pitch to uh, seal the connections so that it's airtight. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do some whipping around these, this connection here to add to the to some little bit more stability and security. Um, here I've got some dog bane uh, that I had twisted and I did some whipping on this end. And then I'm gonna just take some regular, some jute here and do the other, uh, other side. So I just wanna link with that. And so with whipping, again, you're just gonna make a loop here long enough for you to pull. Okay. And I'm going to go this direction towards the uh, mouthpiece, which is here, this end. And I just make a loop along the edge here, like that. And then I'm going to begin wrapping. And I'm going to wrap pretty tightly around the, uh, the piece here, the call. Make sure my Coils are nice and tight and they look nice. Gonna build on that one there. And then and I'm going towards the loop end and I don't need to go too far. So then once I get to the desired uh, length that I want, I go ahead and I want to take my end and fit it through the loop and then pull it like that and I want to go ahead and grab the end that's loose here and I want to pull it okay and then I want to be careful because I don't want to crack my piece here and I just kind of pull it slightly underneath like so make sure my edges are tight my coils are tight, rather. Okay, and then once we got that all secure and nicely tapped, wrapped around, we'll go ahead and uh, cut my piece of the end that went through the loop. And then again, if I want, what I can do is I can try to pull this a little bit more underneath. Make, make nice and tight and then this in here is the end that gets snipped which hides the whole configuration like that I kind of can run against there okay so we end up having a piece that looks like this okay not too bad not too bad looking you know and then again I could cover this with pine pitch if I wanted to 
I'm not going to, but um, I could cover it with pine pitch and actually even make it more tighter. Um, but uh, this is pretty much the finished piece here. Uh, I could decorate this, I could paint it, I could stain it. Um, oftentimes, in some of the references that I used uh, to, for research from other uh, YouTube channels, uh, they, there's a lanyard that you can create, that you can hold around your neck when you're hunting so that it's, this call is available for you. Uh, I may do that. Um, again, I'm not a turkey hunter. And, uh, I mean, we have plenty of turkeys in the city. <laughs> they look so tasty, but they mysteriously all disappear around this time of the year. Go figure. But then every time in the spring they show up, and there's usually a whole uh, a flock of them. Just big birds stopping traffic, crossing the street. Um, as if nothing, as if they don't have a care in the world. So plenty of inner city turkeys where I live. Um, but um, for those people that do go out and do turkey hunting or who just want a small project to do uh, with your kids or young ones after Thanksgiving dinner and uh, the carcass is, is of the turkey is, um, is all picked away, uh, you can make something like this. And a little later, when everybody gets up, I'll. Uh, kind of demonstrate how you make the sound but essentially it's just a sucking sound kind of a kissing sound and you know I, you can do it louder and that's what the whole resonator is for to make it louder but I'm gonna let people sleep uh, sleep in so everybody's day off today so uh, Thanksgiving 2018 and uh, yeah this turned out okay this is by the way uh, earlier version that I made with just two pieces um, and it's just using epoxy I didn't wrap it um, so that's an early version, and then this is uh, my second my second version of turkey calls. All right, so as promised, everybody's uh, up now, so I can make a little bit of noise. I'm going to give a, a try of uh, making a yelp or a couple of clucks with this. Um, I'm not good at this. Uh, and uh, I'm just learning this actually from uh, Catman Outdoors does a really good demonstration on how to do this call so I'm basically um, doing as he suggests I recommend you go check out his channel uh, at any rate I um, want to put this in the crook of my thumb and fold my finger uh, my index finger around it like so and then I want to take my uh, other thumb my left hand and cup and make a kind of a, a bell a resonating bell or chamber around the end of the call turkey bone call here and so i want to make a sound or a sound and it's basically trying to find your armature um kind of like those people that play trumpet but it was the the armature that what they told me was about and this kind of seems this seems to be the same way except instead of exhaling you're sucking in so let me give this a try see if we can get So again, I need lots of practice at that. Um, so definitely go check out Catman Outdoors channel. Uh, like I said, he gives a real good tutorial. I'm gonna need a lot of work, but that's sort of how it sounds. Uh, so at any rate, uh, go ahead, give it a try. Happy Thanksgiving.